we're so blessed. We come to worship him also because of who he is. We want to give him glory. He is King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. He's the Savior of our life. He is God Almighty. And we come to lift him up.
voices in our hearts to him. Amen. Appreciate your prayers. We've been praying for, uh, for Brother Kent. And uh, they, they did a, a very, the worst case scenario word was he would have to have major surgery, which he probably could not handle. So they did something that was much less evasive. And thank the Lord it worked. Amen. So he is scheduled to be dismissed and released tomorrow morning. Amen. So we thank the Lord for that. But then Sister Ken comes home today. And her grandson's the one in the yard. She's out there with him. And she goes to sit down on a pile of bricks. And one of the bricks breaks. And so she falls. And she breaks her wrist. Amen. So we're going to pray the Lord puts her in a bubble to keep her from getting hurt. Amen. But we want to pray for her. She has to go, I believe, tomorrow uh, to the bone specialist to see what needs to be done. We're, we're hoping and praying that she will not have to have any surgery. So continue praying for them. Also continue praying for Brother Guy. Uh, yesterday morning he was placed on a ventilator. Uh, he's got COVID plus pneumonia. And uh, the doctors today are saying they're going to give him a 50-50 
today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing, there is not room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessings. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. And all 
my only hope. It's my everything. My only hope. It's my everything. And as I'm praying for lost souls, and I'm praying for those that are walked away from God or those that's on their way away, if, that, if that's a word that we can say. You can see them getting just more cold, and you can see them as they're just not letting the presence of God touch them. I hang on to these words. You cannot run from his presence. He's going to chase you down. Everywhere you go, you're not going to be able to get away from his love. His love will chase after you. His arms are going to reach for you. God will never give up. He loves you. And so as I begin to sing this and I think about, Lord, it seems like a lost cause sometimes as we keep reaching for those that's once known his presence. But I want to tell you that very thing is what's going to keep reaching for them. The spirit that they once felt is going to be running after them. And no matter where they go, they can't hide from it. No matter what they do, they're going to see it in the wine glass. They're going to see it in the beer bottle. They're going to see it everywhere, everywhere they go. Jesus is going to be reaching for them. He's going to say, I'm better than
involved in that battle, and they they may not even realize that they are. Amen. They may not even understand the, the gravity of the situation that they are in or facing. Amen. But the enemy certainly is doing all that amen, he can. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm grateful for the Lord's goodness, though. Amen. Praise God. I am. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I, I have always wanted to learn another language. Amen. And so I have started, uh, you can do it too, if you have a smartphone, you can go to an app called Duolingo. It's free. And you can pick whatever language you want to learn. I'm, I'm trying to learn Spanish. I've been doing it now for 28 days in a row. It's been about 15 minutes a day. And when I'm on that app, I'm thinking, I am figuring this out. Yeah. Amen. Uh, let's see here. Me, El, Lama, Soon, Jeff. That probably isn't what I think it is. But como se llama? What is your name? Yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I, I'm learning a whole lot. But when I really think, I'm, I'm, I'm like, man, I, I am getting this. Because you go through, you know, it has different, like, tests. And I'm, like, passing these tests. And, and, and this little owl or something is going on my screen saying, hey, way to go. You're really learning. So I'm thinking, I'm figuring this out. So then I go to this Spanish page. Uh, one of our missionaries was giving a, a preaching. I'm thinking, I'm going to just listen to it. I, I know Spanish now. And when he starts speaking, I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> What language is he talking here? You need to slow down, man. I'm not. So then I realized I really don't know near as much as I thought I did. I'm going to keep trying. Amen. But it's, it's interesting, though, how you, you, can, you can be in, in, in one environment and think, well, man, I got this fixed out. Amen. My brother in law and I have been playing golf today. We got that figured out real fast. Uh, we have no business being out there. There was, there was one particular hole that I, I mean, no cheating, I, I parred it. And par means that I, I mean, I hit, I hit it in the, in the amount of shots that I should have stopped making. And so on that particular one thing, so Tim, PGA, here I come, man. <laughs> but the next one, we didn't, I mean, we cheated a lot <laughs> because we wouldn't have had enough space to put the numbers on the car. Depending on what environment you're in, you may think, well, I got this figured out, and then quickly you can be proven that you don't. <laughs> Amen. Um, spiritually speaking, that also applies. You can feel very confident, thinking, all right, here we go, I'm doing all right, I'm doing good. Uh, but then it, it's amazing how quickly something, something can come at you. Something can challenge you. Something can, can be... Uh, and, and adversity in your life, and all of a sudden you can go from a mountaintop moment to a to the utter lows of a valley. Amen. Yeah. Anybody ever left a service when we you know had one of those what we call Holy Ghost pullout services, which are wonderful, and it seems like the moment you step out the door, here comes life. Amen. That's that's called ebb and flow, and it's something that we all experience. It's something that we all uh, have encountered. But the reality is, whether you're aware of it or not, there is a very fierce spiritual battle taking place. There may be some, let's say on this side of the church, it's like, what do you mean, Pastor? Everything's wonderful. I, I don't feel any, any pressure. I don't feel much adversity. And the others over here on this side are saying, what are you talking about? Everything's going wrong. It's amazing how that can, that, the, the diversity of that even in a small group such as this. But, but whether you're feeling the pressure or not feeling the pressure, the reality is there's a fierce battle that is waging against you and I. Amen. Praise God. Um, I've, never, I've never been in the military. I don't know what it's like to be in wartime. I, I can certainly try to imagine, uh, any, but I, I, I can't necessarily. But I, I, I do know enough that, that you know, when, when the troops are on the front line and they're, and they're battling, they're, no matter how good they are, no matter if they're special forces, 
uh, Navy SEAL Team 6 or whatever it is, they, they can only withstand that kind of battle for a, for a period of time. Even the best of the soldiers there are, have to take a moment where they get off the front line and rejuvenate. <laughs> Amen. We, we, we can't handle that face-to-face that -face combat, I mean, just daily. I mean, and again, there, there's moments, there's seasons where it seems like that's, man, I, you say, Pastor, I've been in the foxhole a long time. I, I'm really, I'm getting weary. And I've, I've been there. I know what you're talking about. Amen. But, but, the, but the battle, even though you draw yourself off the front line for a moment, that battle is still a wager. It never stops. It never ends. I, I read a story, I believe it was World War I, I don't know World War II, but there was, it was Christmas, Christmas Eve, and the battle lines had been drawn, and, and they, uh, uh, each, each, the allies and the enemy was, was on, in, in their trenches, and one of the sides started singing a Christmas carol. And they come out of their trenches at, in, in the cover of darkness, and they start celebrating the Christmas holiday together. Your enemies coming together for just a period of time. There was no gunshots. There was no fighting. And at that moment, they they were cordial to one another. Now the next day, they were back shooting at each other. Your enemy, your adversary, will never do that. He will never come out of his trench and say, "Hey, can we just get along for just a few hours?" No, he never stops waging the war. Amen. The moment you think that, well, I guess he's, he's letting up on me. No, he's not. He never stops. Amen. When the scripture says that, that the enemy, amen, the adversary, he walketh about seeking whom he may devour, that is all the time. You say, Pastor, this is, this is halftime. Why are you being so heavy? I just want us to understand there is a very intense battle that is taking place, whether you're on the front line of it at the moment or not, it's all, it never stops. And we're seeing it in our society. I mean, we have seen, I, I'm, I'm 45 years old, and there are those here that's older than me that, that probably, I, I, would, I would assume maybe you would agree that this has got to be one of the craziest times in all of our history. Amen. And, and I, I, I don't mean to be a bearer of bad news, but I don't really think it's going to get much better. You know, say, Pastor, come on. Paint with me. We're going to go somewhere. I want to, I want to go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, a very familiar setting of Scripture, Paul's writing. And we're going to just take two verses right now. Amen. And Ephesians, chapter 6. And verse number 12, it says, I'm going to read this first in the, in the uh, English Standard Version, and then I'll read it in the King James. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Look at your neighbor and say, you're not my problem. <laughs> Amen. Now, I didn't say you weren't a problem, but you're not my problem. The, the, that's the, the, the flesh and blood is not what we're wrestling against. That's, that's not the waging battle. Now, now, the enemy would like you to think that it's so and so, or, but no, it's, that's, that's not the battle that I'm talking about here today. Amen. But, he says, this is what we're, this is what we're wrestling. We're wrestling against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness. See, the battle that I'm, that I'm discussing here tonight, right there, we read, it goes above where we're living. It goes above this horizontal. It involves that which is out of this world, the spiritual. Amen. Cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Amen. Therefore, Take up the whole armor of God that you, again, point to your neighbor, that, that talking about you, that you may be able to withstand, that, you're gonna, that you'll be able to survive in the evil day and having done all to stand. Next verse says, stand ye therefore. The King James Version, one that might be a little more familiar, 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So there, there are several elements to this spiritual battle. Amen. Now, how many here, you have to raise your hand, but how many here is familiar with this verse of Scripture? This is something you've heard before. This is something you have read before. Maybe even it's something that you've taken time and you have studied it out because this is important for us to understand. Because this describes the battle that all of us are involved in. You say, I'm not involved in this. Yes, you are. Whether you want to be, you say, I didn't volunteer for this army. Yep, but you're, you're in this. Every person is engaged in this battle, whether they realize it or not. Amen. So the first thing that Paul says that we are wrestling against, he says it's principalities. Let me just give you some definition, okay, to help maybe explain a little bit what that means or what a principality is. Amen. First of all, the first word it gives is its chief. The, the battle that we're waging against, it's not like little bitty, you know, like, like the junior army. These, 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 whatever, you, the forces that we're, we're waging against, they're viable. Meaning they're, 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 they're not messing around. And, uh, Amen. There they are, and I'm not here to give credit to the enemy. I, I know I'm going to clarify that all the time, but but they are a force to be reckoned with. Amen. Uh, it means the, it's the principality, the beginning, the the corner, uh, the the magistrate, the 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 power, the principle, the rule. I mean, there is an authority or an influence. That, that has influence over, over a, a, a vast area. Again, that's where I'm saying that you, you this evening might say, well, hey, listen, I did not, in, I didn't volunteer for this army, but you, you may not even be aware of it. You, you may have no intentions of, of fighting in this battle or this war, but that principality has influence over you. And you're being manipulated by that, inf by that influence and you may not even realize you are. The people that are so, what's the word? Wicked, dark, violent. Uh, I mean, I, I realize the, the, the sinful heart of man is, is, is a wicked, wicked thing. But the influence over that, amen, is the enemy, <laughs> the adversary, the devil, and all of his gifts. And those that are being so wicked, May or may not. I don't know if they realize it, but they are being influenced by this principality yes. that we are wrestling against. Yes. So it kind of gives you an indication of how powerful this principality is. It's not just a minor, uh, uh, you know, scuffle here. This is a war, and it's it's war. It's a war that continually gets more intense. Paul wrote a lot about principalities. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20, he said, Which we wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and, and, that, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. That's a really encouraging verse of scripture, because what that is describing is the God that we put our faith in, our trust in, amen, that says, Lord, we're waging in this battle, and we, we've got things coming at us from all different directions, but the good thing is that the one in which we're trusting in, the Bible says, amen, that he is far above all principalities. 
we either are or not, but, but we better we better make up our mind that we're going to engage in this battle. We cannot, there is no neutral area in this battle. There, you know, in, in the world of the economy, Switzerland is known as a neutral nation. They're, they're not an enemy of nobody, they say. We're, we're, we want to be friends with everybody. But one reason is they're really small. And they're surrounded by a bunch of powerful nations. And so, and plus they make a lot of chocolate, right? <laughs> but but they, they don't, they don't want to, we're, we're a neutral. There is no neutral ground in this battle. Amen. There comes a moment when you and I are going to have to decide, I need to engage in this battle. And when I engage in this battle, I am going to be taking on principalities and these powers. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you have he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. When you were lost, he's saying you were influenced by the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Amen. I, I don't ever want to walk away from the covering that God has placed in my life. And, and, and the enemy is so deceiving, and he, he makes it look like it's enticing to, to go out there and do your own thing and walk away from the things of God, and, and those things are no longer valuable. But when you walk out from under that covering, you are exposing yourself to these powers and to these principalities. And the sad part is that a lot of people do it unaware. They really, they, they know it's not the right thing to do, but they don't understand what they're exposing themselves to. Amen. Principalities and powers. And then Paul says, spiritual wickedness. Do you notice there, there's, a, there's an advance in authority? Principalities is, is not nothing to say, well, it's, not, you know, it's no big deal. It is. But powers generates, it, 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 it's, it's above that. Spiritual wickedness is above principalities, or powers. Let me give you some definitions here. Depravity. Malice. Iniquity, hurtful, evil, vicious, bad, grievous, harm, lewd, malicious, wicked. This is on a whole other level. Amen. I, I, I've read stories where people have done some horrible things. And you're in, in my mind, I thought, wow, how, how could a human being ever do something? Other spiritual wickedness. I, I've said it many times, and I, and I mean this. I, anybody that's in their right mind would not do the things they do. Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, serial killers that you may have heard of. But not just serial killers. There are, there are some wicked people out here today that may not cause you bodily harm. And I shared this the other day. There was a, there was a picture of a of a protester that that uh, had a, had a sign in this sign that says, you know, I'm proud. I'm, I'm going to hell and proud of something to that. I'm thinking that individual don't even know what they're saying. They themselves alone would never say that, but it's that spiritual wickedness that has had an influence. Yeah. Let me tell you, we're seeing depravity on a whole other level across the world. Amen. In our, in our society. And then there is, as Paul described, all 
unity is so important. Because if, if the enemy can bring any kind of division, it gets our attention off what we need to be focusing on. Amen. If he can bring division, guess what? We start, we start focusing on one another, which is not the issue. We start wrestling, but then we start wrestling with flesh and blood. And it gets our focus off of the things that are most important. Amen. I, I, I personally have a policy that I've tried to put within my ministry, and that is I, I, I don't like drama. You, there are people in our world today that thrive on drama. I'm a firm believer, as long as you don't build a platform for that drama to perform, normally they're going to go somewhere where they can perform the drama. I don't want that. I don't have time for it, number one. Because what that does is that gets us off the focus of what we should be focused on. That drama, most of the time, it don't even matter. It's just, it's petty stuff anyway. What we need to focus on is a spiritual structure in this region, amen, that is, that is wreaking havoc in so many people's lives and even in the lives of our own families. There are those here today, your children, our children, amen, maybe marriages and families that have been influenced by this spiritual structure. And, 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 and we, if we're not careful, can be so distracted. And we can get mad at this and get mad at that. But what needs to happen is you and I need to make a decision that we're going to engage in this battle. Paul lists all those things. And the very next word in, in verse 13 is wherefore. <laughs> and, and basically that what he's saying is because of all of this that's just been listed, because all of that is, is real and it is legitimate, you need to do this. Because of this is, is in structure, spiritual structure there. Paul's like, I'm going to give you what you need in order to combat that. Amen. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. I mean, he gives you armor to help you. And that's the purpose that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. But let, me, let me give you my own translation. If you don't take the armor, you ain't going to make it. Right. 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 Because what does the armor do? It covers you. I mean, without the armor, you're, you're, you're open. You're, you're exposed. And does anybody here think that the adversary, if he sees an opening... Do you think he'll take advantage of it? Yes. Absolutely. So what is the armor? Now, we, don't, we don't have time to go through all of these in detail, but and I don't have these. This is the order that I prayed in, okay? The helmet of salvation. Where do you wear the helmet? On your head. The helmet of salvation. What does that do? It protects my mind. Anybody realize or agree that the battlefield that you wage this war in, where does it, where does it happen at? Right here, man. Constantly. And the thing about my mental condition is questionable at times. All of us, I guess, to some, to some degree. But but when I'm get, when I'm when I'm when that battle's going on and it's right here. And I, I'll be honest with you, there, there, are, there are moments when I, I, do, I, I, don't, I don't have the ability within me to fix it. But that's why I feel it's called the helmet of salvation. Because you know how you get your salvation? You don't earn it. You don't work for it. You don't deserve it. But we are saved by grace through faith. It is what? It is a gift from God. It is given to us. And so God puts the helmet of salvation to where he gives me the ability to, for my mind to be protected. You cannot go without the helmet of salvation. Amen. The breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate, it 
covers, it covers the heart. And I know the Bible, you know, when it, when it talks about the heart, it's not necessarily talking about the, the, the pump in your chest that pumps blood around through your body, but, but it, it's, it's the, the seat of your emotion, this, you know, that, that, that breastplate of righteousness, that righteousness is not what I, I don't, I don't earn that, I don't like go through life and well, here's some, I'm going to pick up some righteousness here, I need to keep, no, it's his right standing. It's, it's his. Amen. So that's why when, I, when I'm born again, when I'm born into the kingdom of God, I've got his righteousness to stand on. I've got his righteousness that, 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 that as a breastplate. You've got more than you. I mean, again, that's why when, when we become a, a child of God, that's why immediately, amen, we can wage in this battle because of, of what he's given us. Amen. The belt of truth. Amen. And again, this is, this is how I look at it. There may be other definitions. But when I, when I pray, Lord, I'm putting on the belt of truth to this morning, I, 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 I just, my hat, I grab my belt. I say, Lord, I, I want to be a man of integrity. I want to be a man of character. I want to be true. Amen. Now notice I'm not saying, Lord, let me be perfect. Let everybody think I'm great. I just want to be, I want to be a man of character and integrity. I want to be a man of my word. And guess what? God will help me do that. The shoes of the gospel. Amen. That our, that our feet should be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. And when I put on the shoes of the gospel, I pray, God, I want to spread the gospel. Lord, give me a burden for people. Help me to, help me to love people. Help me, Lord, to, to not just uh, be able to be numb and just say, well, it's their own choice. Uh, but help me to, to have a desire to, to intercede for somebody that's not living for you. Help me be that, that connection for somebody, amen, that needs what I have been so wonderfully given. And then there's the shield of faith. The Bible says, above all, taking the shield of faith, that you be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. You think he's shooting them at you? I guarantee you he is. And the only reason that he's not able to hit you is you've got this big shield of faith. Your faith is so powerful. Your faith is so important. That's why, amen, when you start to doubt, you need to, you need to remember, hey, I can't go there because I can't, I can't relinquish my shield of faith. I've got to have faith, and I'm going to declare faith. I'm going to believe God for the impossible, even though everything around me, it looks like it's crumbling, but my faith... And then there's the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Amen. Praise God. They, they say if your Bible's falling apart, it's usually a good indication that the, the owner of that Bible's not. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not the smartest guy. There's a lot of things in here I, I don't really understand. And, but I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm a student of it. I'm learning. Amen. I make it a practice every single day to open that book up. I spend time in that book. Amen. There, there's days, I'll be honest, like today, I read today, and nothing really just jumped out at me. But most days, I'll be reading along, and man, something will just kind of, whoa, where'd that come from? I love that. It helps me. Amen. That the Word of God, that there, I'm telling you, you need to, this is the only part of your armor that you don't, that's not just a defensive weapon, it's an offensive weapon. You can take the Word of God, amen, and you can cause havoc into the kingdom of that enemy, amen. Praise God. The armor of God. Amen. You need to make sure you put it on. How, how do you put it on, Pastor? Well, I put it on through prayer. Amen. I, I, I speak of it. Then I, then I want to live it. I, as I put the belt of truth on. All right, I put the belt of truth on. But then throughout that day, I, I want to keep in mind, hey, I'm going to be a man of character. I'm going to be a man of integrity. Uh, amen. When I put that helmet of salvation and, and I get these thoughts that come into my mind, just like you get thoughts in your mind, guess what? Uh, I'm playing, I've got the helmet of salvation. Come on, Lord. Uh, you're going to help me keep my mind today. Uh, and he does. Amen. I've got to take the armor that I put on in the morning. I've got to use it. I've got to put it into action. Saying all of that, amen, 
My subject here tonight is your Achilles heel. There was a man by the name of Achilles. He was the greatest warrior of Agamemnon's, I can't pronounce, I'm, I'm not a Greek scholar, but anyway, he was one of the greatest warriors of this guy's army. The hero of Homer's Iliad. He could not be defeated in battle. The key to his great power was a childhood secret. When he was just a boy, his mother, whose name was Thetis, dipped him head first into the magical waters of the river Styx. And since everything that the water touched would become invincible, Achilles lived the life of a champion. In the first nine years of the Trojan War, he ravaged the countryside, capturing 12 cities. But Achilles eventually met his match in the form of an arrow. The arrow came from the bow of Paris, guided by the hand of Apollo himself. The arrow came to, one, to the only vulnerable spot on his body, the one spot that his mother failed to immerse in the water <coughs> as she held him by his heels. So Achilles, unaware of his own weakness, became vulnerable. All of us here tonight, we all have our strengths that we like to tout, and we have weaknesses that we like to forget. But if we are to become a champion, there is one thing on which we can definitely count on. That in the spiritual battles that we are in and that which lay ahead of us, there will always be an Apollo guiding an arrow with pinpoint accuracy to our area of greatest vulnerability. When somebody makes a huge mistake or whatever, big or small, but somebody makes a mistake, and we in our minds say, well, I would have never done that. You need to be really careful. Because every single one of you and I that are here today have that same potential within us. It's only by the grace of God. Amen. If I don't recognize the fact that, you know what, I, I, I've got areas where I am vulnerable, I am opening myself up to the arrow. And as in the story with Achilles, it doesn't have to be a, a big arrow. The enemy, amen, can have and does have pinpoint accuracy. Here's what happens when we're waging in the battle. Unaware that we are even a, that we're even vulnerable, Amen. Unaware that we have any sort of weakness, but that unawareness is what, in essence, has made us or can make us vulnerable. That's why I say all of that to say this this evening. That's why you and I need to engage in this battle. Because if you don't engage in this battle, and you're just a spectator, you're just trying to be that neutral place which don't exist anyway, let me tell you what happens there. You start getting numb. You start, you start, there's, a, there's kind of a spirit of apathy that can get on you. Where you're just kind of, eh, whatever. And what happens is when you're not, when you're not aware, Amen. You're, 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 not on your, you're not on your toes. You're not on your guard. That's why the writer says to be vigilant, be sober, because your adversary is walking about me, meaning you, you've got to be alert. You, you, you've got to be engaged. I, I know maybe some here tonight say, the Pastor, I'm tired. I'm so weary. Hey, I, I, I understand that. But scripture says, be not weary in well doing, for in due season we will be. Amen. Is there anybody here tonight?
tonight that would possibly agree that in those weary moments, and we all go through them, amen, but if you will take the time and make the effort to spend time in prayer, that that season of prayer can give you energy that you didn't realize you had, building up your most on holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. They're, they're telling you, church, but you can't pray in the Holy Ghost if you're not engaged in this battle. What's your Achilles heel? If you were asked, could you describe your greatest moral or spiritual area of weakness? Could you give examples of how you have succumbed to your Achilles heel in the past? And here's maybe a more important question is, do you currently have a, a strategy for shoring yourself up in this vulnerable area that you have. See, you cannot change what you don't acknowledge. Basically what I'm saying is at some point or another, you and I, me included, has got to acknowledge, hey, there is an area in my life that I am vulnerable in. Amen. For some reason, we as a church, if we're not careful, we can get this idea that we've got to show how powerful we are and how, how uh, immovable that we are. Let me tell you, I, I think it's just as important at times to realize, you know what? Uh, amen. I'm not, I'm not superhuman. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not super perfect. Uh, I've got some areas where I've got some I'm vulnerable in. Uh, but guess what I'm going to do? How to, now I'm going to fix that. Uh, not by denying it. Uh, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to engage in this battle. Uh, I'm going to make sure the armor is put on. Uh, because the armor will give me the ability to withstand. Have you humbly sought God for help? Have you confided in a mentor to whom you can make yourself accountable? Those are all wonderful steps to take. Amen. I'm telling you, church, I, 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 this is very heavy on my heart because we are, there's a paddle waging. We have got to engage. You cannot, we will not win this battle sitting on the sideline. The longer we sit on the sideline, not only are we at risk, but those in which we care about are at risk. And furthermore, that spiritual structure is going to stay intact. It's going to further strengthen the strongholds of this area. Amen. Praise God. Anybody tired of the devil? Anybody sick and tired? Of the, of the habit that he has wreaked in your life and your family and your what people you love. Yeah, I mean, seriously, if it's something that we're sick, I'm, I'm sick and tired of. of, of I mean, it, and I know I, I, I've got a different perspective than you have, as a pastor, but but I, I know you, you you see enough yourself that you 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 recognize at some. Amen. Because I'm telling you, that's the only. It's promised that we will be. It will engage. We're landing where we landed. Let's, let's stand here this, this evening. Amen. We all have an Achilles heel. We all have a weakness. You may have kept it hidden. Nobody may know about it. The enemy is, is, is going to hone in on. He will figure it out. And when he does, and you know what? To him, it don't matter how long it takes. Whether it's days, months, or years, or decades, it doesn't matter to him. He will find that weakness, and he will expose it, and he will bring it to the surface. Come on, church. Let's put the armor on. Let's go to battle. Let's see the revival. Let's see our family saved. Amen. Let's see the kingdom of God advance in this region. Hallelujah. Anybody this evening, you want to you join forces? I want to open this altar. Find you a place. Amen. We've got too much at stake in this region today.
Come on, let's stand in the gap today.